put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Darkman 2, The Return of Durant, movie review. It's been five years since the events of the first film, at least in real life, presumably in the movie too, I'm not entirely sure it's clearly stated. Anyway, Durant is still around, he's just been in a coma. Yeah, try to wrap your head around that one. And he wakes up again. And finding that his <laughs> business operations have been left in the hands of those less skilled at it than he, it's been going downhill. And so he is determined to rebuild and even expand. And to do this, he is going into the realm of science fiction, which, granted, the first one was already partially there. I'm not going to give away exactly what, but it involves weaponry. And meanwhile, Dark Man has a potential new chance at making the synthetic skin work with, I think it was David Brinkman, a similarly skilled scientist who is working in the same field. And I suppose that pretty well does it for the plot. I am going to start by saying if you like the first one and you want more of that, more of basically that thing, that kind of thing, this is serviceable. It'll do the job. It is, it's about as good as you could expect. Considering that the first was a theatrical release, directed by Sam Raimi, with Bill Pope doing cinematography, Danny Elfman doing the score, and this one is a direct-to-video release, so... Yeah. Considering that, it's not that bad. It, it definitely has some good elements to it. I, I'm going to try to start with the positives, because there generally are. Larry Drake returns, and he is still really good as Durand. And they, they actually opened the movie in much the same way they opened the first one, with build-up to Durand. In fact, they do it in the same way, r roughly. People talking about Durand and being and and just kind of setting up this guy is a badass. And the situation is slightly different, but it's it's the same basic thing. And they they do some good stuff with the character. There's again humor to it. They. They, they build on the thing of having a, a short temper in the first one. Now that he's awoken from a coma, he's not completely... He's not completely ready for prime time. So he has to take these pills, and they get a lot of good jokes out of that, of him like getting 
really frustrated and infuriated by some situation, and then I'll turn to one of his goons. My pills! It's, it's fairly amusing. And... I suppose that more or less covers it for... Actually, closing off on his character, I will say that it he's not as intimidating as he was in the first one overall, mainly due to the writing, and uh, I don't know, they there there is sort of a general problem of they have these characters and they don't seem to completely know what to do with them. One of the th these is Durant, where it's just kind of, I mean, he's essentially doing the same thing as he was in the first one. He's expanding power. He's, he's getting more power over the, the city. The, sort of the twist to it here is that everyone in the city thinks he's dead and he intends it to stay that way. I think there might actually be a reason stated in the movie. Forgive me, I do not remember what it is, but I'm not gonna... There might be one, so I'm not gonna complain that it's, like, unwarranted. But yeah, they, they just, they don't really have a lot for him to do, sort of. He's, he's on screen more than he was in the first. In the first, it was very effective the way every time he was on screen, something bad was going down. And in this, there's just scenes of him sitting around or talking to his henchmen and stuff. It's just, he's less mysterious. And the same goes for Darkman, bringing nicely into that. In the first one, they sort of do the, the Batman intimidation game, I guess, kind of thing with Darkman, with, we see, we see it from the perp's perspective, we kind of see him, we, we sense that something is moving, and we're like, Did, that was Darkman, he's, he's on his way, and, and the goon is like, oh crap, where is he, and suddenly he just bursts out of nowhere. It was doing the Batman Begins thing before Batman Begins, you know, 15 years prior. And in this, again, he's just kind of... In fact, I think the first time you see him, not a spoiler at all, you see him in the first 10 minutes or so, and he's just driving a grocery car, cart, grocery, what is it? shopping cart thing. I don't even remember, I guess it's like stolen stuff from the lab or something, and it's, that, that's just kind of it. It's, it's not at all intimidating, or it doesn't build up, and it doesn't, he's, he's no longer a mysterious presence, like I said. And they also don't really seem... It's, it's like they didn't know what he would be doing in between movies because, it, again, time has passed between the two movies. It's, that's absolutely clear from several lines of dialogue in this. And yet, it doesn't really seem like Darkman has completely taken to vigilantism and is out there fighting crime, which is kind of the sense you get at the, the, at the ending of the first one. The, the first one being a really great origin story. You expect him to then go on and do, and in this it just doesn't really seem like he did that. It, it seems like he hasn't grown, he, he hasn't gotten anywhere between movies, and it's 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 annoying when a character is it's more, more than annoying, it's mediocre writing when time passes and a character doesn't change at all. There is a brief bit, again near the beginning, where you do see him sort of stop crime or... Yeah, 
so, so, somewhat. And it seems kind of incidental. It's like, well, I was in the neighborhood. Like, yeah. Uh, the there is some good stuff with, uh, I'd say, especially with his character. They they do not repeat the arc of the first one, which I'm really grateful for. Because it was done brilliantly in the first one. There was no need to reiterate the misunderstood monster kind of thematic. You just not necessary. And instead they go for some basically the theme here is something taken away from you, a, a loss of dreams, that you you wanted to do something with your life and someone else took that away, and yeah, that, that's kind of the, the thematic of this. And they also did add one of the relatively few areas where this has Excuse me, has something that wasn't at all in the first, is that they give Darkman this kind of cool underground railroad, and I think that's actually like a, a euphemism in real life, but here it's completely literal, he has an underground railroad, I guess a subway, and it's, yeah, just completely his own, and he kind of uses that to travel around the city. Not stopping crime, I guess. I don't. I don't know exactly what he uses for, but it's it's a kind of cool idea. It and it's relatively unique. It's not something you see a lot of heroes, anti-heroes or otherwise using. You know, there plenty of them have cars or motorcycles or stuff like that. But no, it's a, a train, and it. it Fits with, well, a train isn't exactly discreet, but if no one knows about it, and it seems like it's like that, and yeah, yeah, it, it allows him to travel unseen. There are a few, well, I don't know, there's like one goon of the new ones who's who has some, some quirk to him. That was a word I did not use in my, for, in my review of the first one, but I hope it came across in my descriptions of the various things. The first movie had a lot of quirk. This one not so much. But there is this one goon, Ivan, who is like a former Soviet Union kind of thug. And, and when he remembers to, he's got this thick Russian accent. And he'll sometimes like complain, uh, you capitalist, you, you can't get anything done. And it's, it's, it's kind of fun. The dialogue is definitely pretty good. Not quite on the level of the first one, but some really great cheesy lines. This Durant wakes up from this coma and he like watches the news and it's all like, ah, oh, this crime skyrocketed, just massive, just everyone is killing each other in the streets. And Durant just calmly states, it's a horrible thing, this violence, especially when I don't profit off it. And that just, yeah, that sums it up perfectly. He, both he and, well, to an extent, Dark Man, I, I suppose Durant actually gets the most of them, get good one-liners and deliver them quite well. I should talk about the recasting of Dark Man, Peyton Westlake. The my friend Kirby had pointed out in one of his videos, can't quite remember which, that they replaced Liam Neeson with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I'm just guessing that that's how you pronounce that. Who looks nothing like Liam Neeson? And absolutely. And honestly, I had not watched this movie. I'd, I'd watched the, the first movie, I've watched that several times in the last couple of years since I got the DVD. This one I had not watched since I was like 12. I watched the entire trilogy on TV back then. And I was a little worried because Vosloo is a little... 
hit and miss. I have no problem with the guy, but he's not always completely dependable. But he does quite well with the role. He, he has the maniacal tackle down. I mean, again, you don't... You aren't as afraid of Dark Man in this, and he isn't as unpredictable as in the first. But he does a pretty decent job, and you also very much feel for him, which again, the movie actually makes you care. I, I found myself getting into it and really sympathizing with you know, sympathizing with the good guys, hating the bad guys. And again, that's not a given in a direct-to-video <laughs> sequel. So, kudos on that. And the... That does bring me to sort of the... As of the first one. Everyone believes that Peyton Westlake is dead. And that's basically how it's easiest for Darkman to do his... Whatever it is he does, if he isn't stopping crime. So, one has to wonder why he continues to use at least the first name of Peyton and the same face. I can appreciate that they wanted to... They, they wanted to get you accustomed to seeing the, the face of the, the actor playing Westlake. But it just kind of... You burnt that bridge slash face in the first movie. I'm sorry, but you don't get to turn back. If he has the face of a dead guy, why would he use that face? And it's not like he can't choose another face. So, I, I really have no idea. Why didn't he choose like one of the... One of the goons from the first one or something. Some, someone people wouldn't know about. I, he wasn't like a world famous scientist, but still... Yeah, anyway, it's, it's kind of strange like that. And, and in general, there are these various character motivations and... Well, not motivations, but their, their actions and their logic is nowhere near as strong as it was in the first. Especially Darkman and Durant. I guess it's to make... Excuse me. To, to get it to feature length. Because it does seem like some of the things... It seems like the movie could have... Excuse me, ended sooner than it did. Again, because they don't have that much to do. There, there aren't a lot of hoops to jump through to get to the end game. And in general, the, the, the tactics of Dark Man just do not seem as strong in this one as they were in the first. The... The action... I think overall there's roughly the same amount of action in this as there was in the first. But... It's... It's much smaller scale, again, obvious for the direct -to video release, and as a general thing in this, it's just not... The first one has a very fast pace. The... It's slightly shorter than this, I think, actually. This one is like 88 minutes, not 89, I suppose. Not kind of the end credits. Yes, I'm stuck with for details. And it is not as swiftly paced. It's not... 
don't know, it's, it's not really boring. This is the game that some of the time the characters don't really have something to do, or at least not something that seems really vital that we see them do. But it decidedly has a slower pace. It is not as constantly, and it definitely is nowhere near as dynamic. It, it in general, isn't particularly dynamic. There are sequences that are somewhat. The it does have some great tension though. The various tense scenes really get you on the edge of your seat. And I, I'd maybe say it's more of a thriller than an action movie, but overall I suppose I could say the same about the first one. Now, if... One thing that's also somewhat lost, the, the script is not anywhere near as tight as it was in the first one. The various, where, where the first one was very surprising, had a lot of twists, and thusly avoided a lot of cliches, or it sort of turned them on its head. You, you'd be expecting someone to die, and then suddenly something completely different happened. This one... It tries for that some, but it frankly falls into the... It, it, it does do a lot of the cliches that the first one very deftly avoided, or... Yeah, turned on its head. The visuals are considerably less interesting. There's really no way around it. It's not poorly shot and edited. It's just much more average, really. It's it it completely lacks that, or most of the time lacks the the spark of Raimi. Pope coupling, and when it does actually do some of it, when it actually is as visually interesting as the first, it's very clearly, it's stuff that was in the first. Like in the first one, you have the, the insanity, which I'll admit, it didn't seem like he was beyond reason in the first movie. But in this, it's even... They, they'll actually do the insane rampage thing, and nothing comes of it, and he doesn't... Darkman doesn't fly into rage. I, know, I suppose maybe that's the... growth in between movies. He did talk about group, group therapy, so maybe... Actually, therapy group. Anyway... Yeah, they, they do the the same visual sequence with the insane rage kind of thing. And there's maybe one or two other similar things in that regard. The gothic sort of style to it is essentially gone. I don't think there's anything that the, the city is still dark and menacing somewhat, but it's nowhere near the same as the first one. The first one seemed almost like a, a legend or mythos. Very, very comic booky, very distinct. And this one, it just feels like it's, it's a big city. It's also very much, it's, it's lost all of that horror-ish stuff of, of the first one. I suppose really the only thing left of the 
classic movie, uh, horror movie kind of thing is this the 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 look of the costume, which is of course the same. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.